the street, Mozambique, they're not pronounced that heavy, but it's, that's where you... Uh, actually, the branch of the ministry up here is called the Dream Project. Oh, okay, the Dream Project, that's what it's called there. Okay, so let's welcome Michael Goodnight this morning. I speak in Portuguese over there, but I'll try try my best to speak in English over here. How's that? Larry, everything good to go back there? Okay. Okay, well, just want to start this time off with a short prayer, all right? So, Lord, we just look to you, God. We ask that you would speak, Lord, that I would get out of the way, Lord, and that you would speak. Lord, just live in me, Lord, right now, God. And let your voice come forth, Lord, your words. Nothing more, nothing less, Lord. I look to you, and I give myself to you. I ask that our ears would be open to hear, and our eyes would be open to see, God, what you're saying to us this morning. Lord, let the windows of heaven just uh, be wide open over us, Lord, today, and, and our hearts be wide open to receive the reign of God from heaven. Just look to you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Lord, bless everyone here today. Amen. Jesus is awesome. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to uh, start out, I guess, with a short testimony uh, of what God is doing in Mozambique, Africa. And uh, just uh, pray that God will bless your heart today. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And Jesus is here today to bring freedom and liberty to the captive. And as always, He's always ready to bring freedom and liberty to us if we'll fix our eyes upon Him. The scriptures He said, uh, the scripture says that He whose mind is stayed upon the Lord uh, is in perfect peace. God keeps us in perfect peace if we look to Him. The problem is we look to the world around us so much and are blinded by people and things all around us. So God is challenging us today to lift up our eyes uh, to Him. Uh, he, he told Abraham, Abraham, lift up your eyes from the place where you are to the north, the south, the east, and the west. For all the land that you see, I have given it to you and to your sons forever and ever, your descendants forever and ever. He said, Arise, walk to and fro throughout the width and the breadth of the land. Everywhere you walk upon, I have given it to you. And so that's a challenge for you today, for us today, to lift up our eyes from wherever you are in the faith, wherever you are in life, put your eyes on Him. And uh, every place that you put your foot, He's given it to you. Anything that you can see in the Spirit, He's given it to you. All the promises of God are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. That's what the Scripture says. So I don't care what the world around you has told you, has said, what uh, you know, the TV has said, or the radio, or your friends, or your family. If it's not in agreement with the Word of God, it's a lie. Drive it out by faith in Jesus Christ. So, so today we're going to go, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what God is doing in Africa, driving this stuff out of our hearts. And I'm uh, going to go to some things in the Scripture here. Gosh, I've got a mile-long list of things I'd love to share with you. Over in Mozambique, you know, we're, we're in the Word of God daily. And, uh, you know, for hours hours you know we're worshiping and praying and in the word of god daily so let me just uh say that that by the washing of the water the word god sets us free he sanctifies us and delivers us so the more we seek him the more we keep our eyes on him in the word the more freedom that he brings to our lives as we worship him in spirit and in truth so i'm just going to say that in mozambique uh, uh, this last time, uh, we we had to move uh, properties. We needed to go and search for a new property. So we spent a month and a half 
looking for a new property. And uh, uh, we finally we came to one property. You know, and uh, for those of you that don't know, we have an orphanage and a discipleship training center there in Mozambique. And so we found a new property, and uh, we, when we set our feet on the property, finally, after a month and a half no, of having no peace with anything that we saw, we put our feet on that property, and everybody that was with me had a peace. And uh, when they, we got there, they said, you guys have been here before. Three years ago, you were here. And uh, you prayed for us, and you were preaching you know, to us three years ago. And then we remembered. And they said, the next time you come here, uh, set your foot on this property, it will be yours. <laughs> and so we went back, you know, just excited and thrilled about what God was doing. And we went back and told our children that we take care of and our uh, workers and those who come daily to seek the Lord and, and to... Uh, to be filled with His Spirit and to seek Him in His Word. And uh, we told them, and they were all thrilled. They were all excited. Well, a week passed by. The family of the African, uh, but like their extended family, heard that they were what they were doing, and they didn't like it. So they threw a wrench, tried to throw a wrench in the plan. And uh, the people said, uh, then we went to buy it, and they said, no, we're not going to sell it. Not for any price, not to anybody. We're not going to sell it. And they explained later what it was, the complications with the family. So we went back and we uh, told everybody. And uh, But, you know, I, <laughs> we, uh, we dug in, we dug our feet in, and, and we pressed in to God and we began to declare. You know, we didn't want to continue looking for another piece of property and we felt the peace. We still felt the peace. We knew that God had given us this property. So we de began to declare it. We began to prophesy it. We began uh, to say, every place upon which the sole of our foot treads, you have given it to us. And uh, we fasted. We prayed. We cried out to God. And we went back a week later. And they said, okay, we're selling it to you. So we started building on, on the property. And uh, we, we started, we finished, uh, half of the house was built, one house was built, and we started finishing it. And then we started fin uh, building another house. And uh, uh, while we were building, within a month after we got there, uh, the government or the, of the city decided they would uh, pipe water to that village for the first time ever. They had never had water. They always had to walk and get their water, and so uh, I, I, and uh, so they piped water into that village, and uh, I am so excited, friends, more excited than I've ever been before in my life, uh, and uh, because of what God is doing over there, and He's, you know, this them piping in water, and uh, them giving us that property, and God doing what He's doing is a is a full, the, the beginning of a fulfillment that I saw of a vision uh, that I had when I was in uh, Africa uh, 15 years ago. And it's also the beginning of a fulfillment of a vision that I saw of, of a, another man that he saw uh, 15 years ago. So let me tell you that vision. And then we'll get back to them piping in the water. Uh, I had this vision when I was on the spirit ship years ago. It was a missionary ship. We carried food, clothes, medicine, and preached the gospel uh, to people uh, in Africa 15 years ago and around the world, actually. And uh, when I was, we were driving through Africa, and I saw this vision. I saw myself in a mud house with a garden. And I, I saw myself, I would wake up every morning at 3 o'clock read, worship, pray, write down what God was saying, and then I would go out and evangelize and preach the gospel and pray for people and disciple people. And that, and another man, and that's exactly what I'm doing these days, right, right here, right now. That's what God has opened up. And also 15 years ago, a man had a vision when he saw me. He had never seen me before in his life, but he had this vision. He said he saw a, a person going from country to country, city to city, you know, from village to village, 
preaching the gospel. And in every city there was a fountain. And around the fountain were children and people uh, playing. And he said as he watched the man, he was climbing up a big hill. And at the top of the hill, he saw the city. And there was a fountain and, the, and children and people playing around the fountain. And as he watched, he saw seven holes opened up in the heavens. And out of the holes came down a light from God in heaven into the fountain. And the fountain began to bubble over onto the streets of the city and on all the children and all the people. And friends, that was 15 years ago. The city piped in water for the first time into that village when we moved in. And they put a fountain right out in front of our property, right out in front of the gate. So every morning, I'm here. This is my front porch. And I'm preaching the gospel. We don't have a church, we, we you know, building anyway. We are the church, but we don't have a building. But we have our yard. And we have a tree that's in the yard right over there. A huge mango tree that gives shade to us. Then my front porch is here. Then the uh, uh, wall is out there with the gate for the car to come in and people to come in. And then outside of that gate is the fountain, you know, that the city built when they decided to pipe water in. Everybody in that city comes to the fountain. Everybody in that village comes to the fountain. All the children, all the people play around that fountain and work out, out there and it's a street so people pass by. Every day, Monday through Saturday, we are seeking the Lord, worshiping, praying, preaching the gospel. I mean digging in with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength to pursue the living God there in that Muslim village. And these Muslim people are passing by every day. And I want to tell you that one day, uh, I mean, every day we have an outpouring of, of the Spirit. But uh, one day in particular, it was so strong, so powerful, so marked, you know. The, it was, uh, I don't, the only thing that I can say, now, friend, is that it was like a sound being released from heaven. And I remember. Uh, the disciples, as they gathered in the upper room after Jesus had went on, they gathered daily, breaking bread and uh, sharing in the apostles' doctrine. And then on the day of Pentecost, uh, they heard the sound as of a rushing and mighty wind enter into that house, and it filled. They were filled with the Holy Spirit, with fire. They went out speaking in other tongues. They went out speaking the words of God. Prophesying.